Hello there, I'm Leo Walder for Kit Guru, and I'm going to be taking a look at the Gigabyte Water Force. What the heck's that? Well, it's some liquid cooled graphics cards. Building a gaming PC isn't especially difficult, it just requires a fair amount of money. You need a decent processor, you need a decent graphics card. If you're in a game at 4K, however, you need graphics cards in the plural. You can game at 4K with a single high-end graphics card such as GTX 980, but it really is going to struggle if you start turning up the graphics settings. If you want to game at 4K with higher graphics settings, then you need multiple GTX 980s. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Now, this system here, built into, into the Inwin 707 case, consists of uh, a Gigabyte X99 UD4 uh, motherboard, um, an Intel Core i7 Extreme, that's a 5960X uh, processor, super duper high end, and three reference GTX 980 graphics cards. Uh, also, there's a Seasonic 1200 watt power supply, which is required because the system takes about 200 watts and each of the graphics cards also about 200 watts. When the thing is fully loaded, it sucks about 750 to 800 watts. Uh, now, the thing is that when you game at 4K, would you believe cranking up certain game settings to the max of 16 times anti-aliasing and such like, this system um, was pulling sort of 16 frames per second in certain games. I'm thinking Metro 2033 here. So this system is not capable of driving any game on the market at any settings that you like when you're using 4K. Uh, you can, however, of course, change your settings to play 4K games, but you do need to pick and choose, even with this mighty level of hardware. Amazing, but true. So the thing is, there are, there are two aspects to this. First, if you look inside the case, you'll see the three graphics cards, there is no space whatsoever. Um, airflow is limited, uh, and the result is that these graphics cards run in the 65 to 80 degree territory. The other thing is GTX 980 is a blooming amazing graphics card. The chip is fantastic. The temperatures are epically low. They are so good compared to previous generations as to make your eyes water. Now, there are certain uh, graphics cards from the past and certain quite recent uh, AMD Radeon cards that will run at close to 100 degrees because that's the way the, the cooler is set to run um, uh, under load. So the fact that these GTX 980s, when they're being thrashed mercilessly, will run in the 65 to 80 degrees is actually pretty good going. However, you need to take away from this that graphics cards packed in that tightly running at those sorts of temperatures and when you're taking 200 watts per graphics card, the heat has to go somewhere. Now obviously most of it's going to exhaust out of the back, but there's a lot of radiated heat. What's the answer? It's obvious you know full well, you build yourself liquid cool graphics cards. You put on a water block, you put a loop around it, a reservoir pump, yada yada. There are any number of really impressive water cooled um, PCs, gaming PCs on the Kit Guru forums and indeed other website forums as well. Some of them make, uh, they, they, they just defy belief. The hardware, the money, and the effort that's gone into them, they are works of art. The fact of the matter is, there are many people who do not have the time, the money, or the ability to build a system like that. I would struggle to build a liquid cool system to the standard that many of our readers come up with. Um, of course, they are a tiny percentage of the readership. And the thing is that when I look at some of the systems, I take my hat off in admiration to those readers. But they strike me as, in many instances, as being like the people you see driving particular classic cars or classic motorcycles, which is, I know they spent thousands of hours in the garage rebuilding the thing. I wonder how much time they actually spend riding or driving the thing. Uh, my suspicion is they spend a lot more time working on it than they actually spend using it. The thing is, there are many people who want to play games, they want a super duper high end system, they can spend the cash on the components, they don't want to spend hundreds of hours machining components and hooking up water cooling systems themselves. So, this is the starting point, three reference graphics cards, air cooled, uh, no great innovation and frankly it's easy to build, you just plop the cards in, hook up the power and you're good. Uh, the alternative for a better approach is to do your own liquid cooling. That is hard work. What Gigabyte has come up with in Waterforce is a pre-built liquid cooled set of GTX 980 graphics cards. So let's have a look at those. So what is Waterforce? Well, for one thing, it's the first and probably the only time I'm going to see graphics cards that come in their own wheeled luggage. 
We've occasionally seen things like little Nvidia cards that come in a like, wooden packing box or some such, which is almost a gimmick. But this is actual luggage. So we open it up and on this side, under the cover and under there, we have two graphics cards, uh, each with their own 120 radiator. You notice the Water Force logo. Uh, this is number three, that's number two, because the cards and the radiators go into the system in sequence, so the hoses all feed out nicely. On this side, we have this whopping great big housing, which sits on top of your case. The idea is the graphics cards are inside, obviously. Um, the radiators then feed out through an optical drive bay. Um, and then they sit in this housing on top of your case. On this side of things, we have this VGA jack, which is an extending rod with these three fingers that each support a graphics card. And under here, we have the third graphics card. So you get quite a lot of hardware. There's also a bag of sort of various bits and pieces, clips and such like to keep it all tidy. Um, but three graphics cards, each with their own 120 radiator, a housing that contains the fans that then whisk away the hot air that sits outside of your case, and a whole lot of other bits and pieces to tie all together. So there we go. Now let's build the system. Right, so this is me sheltering behind all this clutter and hardware. Um, so it's time to install Waterforce, which basically consists of taking out the three air cool cards, uh, bunging in this... Uh, Huge great box on the top and then inserting three graphics cards, putting the radiators in this external casing, which I think is actually called water box. So I lean around here. I've um, cheated slightly by taking out the uh, six screws that secure this graphics cards. Off with the SLI bridge. Off with the power connectors. Reach inside. and winkle out each of the graphics cards in turn. Which brings me to a personal hatred of mine, which are retention clips on graphics cards. Um, incidentally, I need to mention, uh, one of these three graphics cards is the reference graphics card that Kit Guru was sent by NVIDIA when GTX 980 was first reviewed. And two of them came from overclockers.co.uk. Uh, they're absolutely identical. And... Uh, the fact that they're reference cards has made life a lot easier for us because uh, we don't want to be doing a sort of gigabyte water force versus a Zeus, MSI, EVJ or whoever. Uh, this is very much meant to be a comparison against stock, so we're not getting into branding and such like. And also it has to be said that these stock air coolers uh, are quite effective without being anything super duper. Um, obviously we've got all manner of aftermarket coolers and other manufacturers, the, this is kind of a level playing field. So uh, thanks to Overclockers for that. So that's the three graphics cards out, and now I've got heaps of space. I've done a little bit of preparation with this case. The Inwin 707 has this stealth door over the uh, optical drive which I've popped off. I've also taken out the two drive blanks. Just turn that, like so. Uh, to give me some space, because the idea is the graphics cards go in the radiator feeds through the optical drive bay, and I figured, well, give myself as much space as I can. So I've taken out the two blanks, I've also taken out the optical drive, because that takes moments to do. So the first job is to put the uh, housing on the top of the case. It's worth noting, this is aluminium, it weighs quite a few kilos. Uh, so you need a, a substantial case to support it. Uh, you also really ideally want a flat topped case, so certain models with the sort of swoopy tops to them would be a problem. Uh, you pull out these pins, which are spring loaded, to secure it. And that looks about right. Then you open the top and you open the front. Now we've got some cables inside, I'm just going to move around here which I'll hook up in a, in a short while. Uh, the cables have got a four pin Molex connector and a USB uh, header. Uh, so these cables feed through to the front and then in the case and go inside. The Molex is to power the fans and also the display and the USB is to give you uh, readouts and so you can control temperatures and such like, temperatures versus fan speeds rather. Um, then we take number one a graphics card. They've got some little logos on them. Uh, where are we? There's number one, number one. 
which goes to here, number one. Uh, that goes in the bottom of the case, so if I put the graphics card in place and slide it home, get the correct slot, and then we feed the radiator through. Quite clearly, should be self-evident, there are going to be some cases on the market where feeding all this hardware around is just going to be something of a nightmare. I have to confess, I picked the Inwin 707 quite deliberately. Actually, I held it back from a review for a couple of weeks precisely because I wanted to use it for this because it's such a big boxy case. Uh, so sometimes size is a problem in this instance. It's an absolute dream. I'll screw in the graphics cards later. And number two, that's number three. So number two is this, oh, yes, obviously. Plug that in to the next PCI Express slot. Like so. It's worth noting, by the way, the two reference cards, that uh, three reference cards rather, that came out, each have two six-pin connectors. These are gigabyte cards, each have eight-pin connectors uh, because they are slightly overclocked. Um, I believe, and I'll be confirming this, about 100 megahertz above stock. So uh, you require extra juice, which means that your power supply needs six uh, eight pin PCI Express connectors. And then we put in third graphics card and we feed the third radiator through the front. Like so. Now, these uh, clips here, which are sort of two-part affairs, you use those to sort of uh, separate the, uh, the uh, water hoses, um, lock them together in pairs. You've got a total of six clips, uh, so it's two per um, graphics card and radiator setup. So I'm going to just sort out the uh, hoses a little bit, uh, put the screws in place and uh, put the SLI bridge on. Right then, I've tidied up the uh, system a little bit. Uh, I'll spin it around to show you this side in just a moment. What we need to see here is in this uh, water box, this top housing, um, you've got three bays, one, two and three, which are for the numbered radiators and around the front if i just pick up the radiators it doesn't all drag and clatter there are there's a slot where the hoses sit which is numbered three two one so they do want to go in sequence so we take radiator number three which is this one feed the hoses up feed them in like so Take this radiator to the back, and that sort of slides in like that. Then number two goes next, number two, I have to say this is a little like fighting a small sack of pythons, but anyone that's ever done their own water cooling setup, crash bang wallop, is not going to give me any sympathy. I know that for an absolute fact. But, uh, this convoluted hosing does often seem to have a life of its own. Right, let me put that in place. And then take the final radiator. Same setup. And put that in place. Goodness me, as you get more of these things in place, it gets tighter and tighter on space. And that was a little spring loaded pin dropping out. Right, I'll give that a bit of a tidy up afterwards, but for the moment, that's the three radiators each in place. I can put the I uh, need to make sure this is in its groove before I 
shut the front so otherwise I can see myself doing some horrendous damage. I really don't want to do that. Hmm. Tell you what, that's some um, spacing there. Considering the six hoses have to fit through there side by side, that's not really the greatest. It's, uh, if I was being kind, I'd say that's precisely spaced. And if I was being unkind, I'd say it's horribly tight. Right, that's the front shut. That's the top going down. Oh, this is, oh, I see they go behind those pegs, right. Incidentally, I'm fairly sure there are supposed to be installation instructions with Water Force. I didn't get any. However, Gigabyte does have, and we'll link to it on the Kit Guru webpage. Um, Gigabyte has a video done by a Gigabyte guy that um, shows sort of a, a quickish way of a quickish uh, installation guide. Um, so he actually really is spelling out the order of three, two, one and then 321 and how that is I'm not really sure why they made such a big deal out of it um it, it seems to me that the hose lengths actually are the same as each other but uh they seem to think it's important so fine right so that's the water box finished radiators in place i've connected the power i've connected the usb that's on. Uh, I've put the DVD drive back in place. I'll put a blank on the minute. Incidentally, one part that's missing from this setup we were um, supplied with um, is like a cosmetic cover that clips over here to um, uh, just uh, cover the uh, hoses. This sort of whole load of convoluted mess. There's nothing I can do about that. The final part is this humorously entitled VGA jack, which looks like a bit of a bicycle pump with these three sort of uh, adjustable fingers. All right, let's try that again because it's... Uh Right, then let's try and see what happens there. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, it's looking more promising. If it all escapes and there's an awful uncoiling spring kind of noise, then you know I've got it wrong, won't you? And let's try that. And let's try that. Well, I think that's about right. Not madly sure what that's all about. Anyway, I think I've got that completely vertical. Anyway, the thing is going anywhere, which is the main thing. So three graphics cards in place, eight pin power connectors all the way down, gigabyte SLI bridge. Uh, I have to say this convoluted hosing is not pretty, but with the clips in place, it's not quite as terrible as it might be. They feed out through the uh, DVD drive bays at the front, which obviously the way it is, is just a blue nightmare. Um, I need to put one of the bay blanks in place and clearly if I had the cosmetic cover that would hide some of the nastiness. So that I think we can agree is just a fright but it's a fright we're not supposed to be seeing plus I need to tighten it up a little bit so there's slightly less nastiness on show. And the next thing is to power it up, install drivers for the uh, control system and see how it all works. Okay, so we're going to do some before and after gameplay. This is the before with the three air-cooled GTX 980s. And the things to note are we've got this Acer 28-inch 4K display. Below that we have a power meter, which is measuring the power draw of the system, but not the monitor. Um, so that's the motherboard memory, the Core i7 Extreme, and of course the three GTX 980s. Um, running the Windows desktop, it's at 80 watts, which is negligible to go up to uh, north of 500 watts. Best part of 600 at times. Uh, so this is Metro, um, Last Light Redux, uh, and as you can see just about on the screen it's set at 4K and quality is very high. Um, let me just shut down GPU Z and restart it so we get a fresh recording of a temperature. And that's the topmost graphics card and we'll run the benchmark. So it's drawing 250 odd watts now, shoots up to 460. The power draw fluctuates throughout, it's now north of 500 watts, 590, 595, not quite 600. 
and then it will drop back down again. Now at this stage on the first loop the graphics cards are frankly quite quiet. Um, obviously this is the back of the PC so I'm getting far more noise than you'd normally get if you sat at the correct end of it and of course I've got the side panel off and that makes us, uh, something of a difference as well. I can also tell you just by putting my hand here at the moment the air coming out is cool with a slightly warm, certainly not hot, very far from it. Power draw at the minute, 580, 570, or 580 watts, 570. It'll be during the second loop of the benchmark when the temperatures start to rise. It takes a while for the heat to sort of build up inside these graphics cards. Fans are spinning up slightly. I think we can agree that three GTX 980s powers last night Redux very nicely indeed at 4K, but you'd expect nothing less of course. Now the graphics cards kick up again slightly. tells us that it's starting to get warmer inside. With the side of the case on, these graphics cards will hit about 80 Celsius in this benchmark. Uh, with the side off, it's about 10 degrees cooler. And that's the first loop of the benchmark ending. And then it'll go around again with the second loop. Now the fans are wearing away quite nicely and the air coming out is hot at this point. Move my hand to here, I can't feel it. And now the fans are spinning consistently fast so it's got a nice heat soak going on. And now it's stabilised at the, uh, the noise levels I'm familiar with. In the event the cooling was horrendous or some such and the temperatures are going up to 90 or 100, I'm sure the fans would be working up Billy over before it will start to throttle them back off. But for sensible gameplay, sensible temperatures, proper ventilation, this is what three GTX 980 air cooled sounds like. So I'll escape out of that. So we see that uh, average frame rate was 77 frames per second, minimum frame rate, not that much matters, is 28, but that's at frame eight, so that's basically when it's getting going. So we can shut that down. And the other thing is that the uh, temperature, GPU temperature, highest, 84. Actually, 84 Celsius, so having the side off didn't make as much difference as I expected. Um, when I had the three cards with the side on, in fact, that top card hit 86. I mean, these things are obviously a bit variable, but uh, there we go. So um, 84 Celsius, and it's already back down, and the current temperature is down to 65, 64, and it's going to fall off. So there we have it. That's what three GTX 980s in action looks like. Okay, it's time for more gameplay, this time with uh, Gigabyte Water Force installed. Now, the Water Force cards are slightly overclocked compared to the reference cards. They run an extra 100 megahertz on the core speed and 110 megahertz on the boost. 
memory speed is the same. Uh, these graphics cards are the equivalent of Gigabyte uh, GTX 980 G1 gaming graphics cards. So we've got uh, about 7 or 8% extra clock speed in our favour here, and of course we've got the liquid cooling. Um, on the desktop uh, you can see we're drawing 110 watts compared to 80 watts before, so an extra 30 watts which you'd expect, that's an extra 10 watts per graphics card. Uh, let's just run the Metro Redux uh, benchmark again, so for, uh, this is at 4K, quality very high, and let's have that run. Now I can hear the noise of the pumps and the fans and such like whirring away, I mean it's certainly not particularly loud. Power draw up to 570 watts, now past 600, 650. And if you recall before with the uh, air cooled reference cards, peak power draw was up at 530 watts consistently. So here we're looking under load um, 650, that's an extra 40 watts per graphics card. Power draw fluctuates. Now despite that power draw and obviously the system's heating up slightly, the, uh, the fan noise doesn't change, it doesn't vary. Now we found with the air cool cards that uh, well, it was on run 2 where everything has sort of got a nice heat soak going and uh, temperature shot up a bit more and the fan speeds went up as a result. So in a way the first run of this doesn't tell us a great deal. And the power draw is now consistently above 600 watts. Uh, it's going up as high as 670, but it's running uh, fairly consistently around the 650 mark. And that's the end of run one. Now same again now, by this point we'd be expecting the heat soak to have uh, pretty much equalised. Temperature should be rising inside. And with the air cooled system at this point the fan speeds are starting to increase here. The noise levels are consistent. It's worth pointing out, of course, with the air cool cards, the air exhausts to the rear, and a certain amount of noise comes out this way into the rear. With uh, the Gigabyte system, it's the cooling is on top, so the heat goes up, which means we have pump noise um, down bottom, and we have fan noise up top. So how it works is slightly different. But coming out the back, therefore, there is absolutely nothing whatsoever. Okay, let's escape out of this. Now, that's going to pop up the speed. So that's telling us that uh, average frame rate, 84 frames per second, and in the second loop so far it got up to 86 frames per second, which is consistent with the figures that we've already uh, got on the Kikuri website, so that's nice. 
Um, the air cool card's average was 75.6 frames per second, so we've got uh, 9 frames per second extra, which is uh, a handy result thanks to the uh, extra clock speed. But that is only part of the deal. Um, if we look at GPU Z, uh, high, GPU temperature highest 47 Celsius. Now GPU Z only really successfully monitors one card at a time. Let's just rattle through the others just to check when it's found there. 42 for the middle card and 40 for the top. So if we go back to that bottom card, which is the one I was actually intending to monitor. And make sure we're looking at highest reading. Highest reading for the bottom card, 47 Celsius. Uh, when I was uh, benchmarking the system and had the case closed up, uh, the figures I actually got were in the mid 50s. The point is that the air cool cards, the bottom card, ran at 85 degrees Celsius. So no matter how you cut it, you're looking at uh, water forces dropping temperatures by 30 odd degrees. The figures vary from game to game depending on what the graphics load is doing. But 30 Celsius lower for graphics is just, uh, I didn't expect anything like it. Um, the other thing I'd like to show you while we've got this all running is this icon here is for the OC Guru 2 software, which is the um, uh, it's the monitoring control software um, because obviously we have that USB connection that goes into the motherboard so um, it can report what the system is doing um, and when I do the summary I'll show you the front because it's a little bit awkward doing it this way. Um, uh, if we look at this and we look at monitoring, you can see that the thing will happily graph a whole bunch of stuff for you. Uh, temperatures and clock speeds and such like. Uh, thing is, if I shut this down and I'm quiet, if you just listen to what happens when I shut down the software. And that's the fan speeds kicking up. And I'll open the OC software again. A bit of buzzing resonance from the case. And that's the fans going down again. And the reason for that is that the OC Guru software, which control, it monitors, monitors, reports, controls what the system is doing. Without the OC Guru software, um, it's, it goes back into dumb mode and the fans seem to spin at full speed. Uh, also, you can't see it from here, but the uh, LCD on the front of the water box, uh, it reports information, it reports NA, uh, as in not available information from the monitoring side of things. Um, the thing that annoys me slightly about this is that when you boot the system up, OC Guru doesn't run at startup, which is quite peculiar because every other piece of the software you install in your computer does its damnness to run at startup. OC Guru for some reason does not, I couldn't see an option to enable that. Um, and the result is that when you start your system up, it's actually really rather rackety. Then you start the OC Guru software running, and it quietens down nicely. It's a wrinkle, it's a small wrinkle. If the software ran at startup and ran in the background, um, you, you, in fact, as the Corsair software does that's uh, running the H100 iLiquid cooler, then um, all, all would be good. But as things stand, the way OC Guru behaves, uh, I find slightly vexing. Uh, but it is some um, interesting just to see, I'll just do it one more time, the difference between when the software is controlling the fans and keeping everything happy and when the software shuts down. And it all gets noisy. One thing we cannot complain about, however, is the performance of Water Force, because it's blimmin' impressive. Anyway, let's wrap this whole thing up. The good news is that I found the DVD cap uh, that goes at the front of the case to cover up that uh, anaconda of uh, water pipes. So you are looking at uh, Gigabyte Water Force as it is supposed to be. Now if you look at the front of the housing you'll see the LCD display that uh, displays uh, temperature, fan speed and pump speed for each of the three graphics cards. It gives you a little readout. That's nice. Uh, if on the other hand I shut down the uh, Gigabyte control software it'll display a load of uh, NAs which isn't so helpful. I quite like the uh, display readout. The idea of getting information is all well and good. 
I do have a bit of an issue, however, with the control software in the sense I don't actually want any of it. And the reason I don't want it is because, let's face it, the market for triple GTX 980 graphics cards is vanishingly small. Most people have one graphics card. If you have a graphics card, it's unlikely to be a GTX 980. Although I would say you should have a GTX 980. It is very, very good indeed. The number of people that have more than one GTX 980, almost nobody. Uh, if, on the other hand, you're gaming at 4K, and if you're currently running at full HD, you really should try 4K, but it is a PC killer. Uh, you need multiple graphics cards to get the true benefit of uh, 4K. So then you're in the realms of should you have one, two, or even three GTX 980s. Um, so we're talking a tiny handful of uh, people. Apart from the else, obviously, you're talking about a lot of money for multiple graphics cards. If you want to build your own system, and plenty of enthusiasts do, then this is of no interest to you. If you want to play games at 4K, you don't mind spending the cash, and you want the easy approach, this is good. This works. You get a great big bag of stuff, you plug it in, and whoomph, you get your gaming, and it's great. Uh, the results are impressive. My feeling is, anybody that simply wants to plug and play isn't interested in fiddling around with software. Um, control software and such like it should start when the system starts and that should be it. Maybe you should have two buttons on the front, go and stop. That's all I want. Obviously you want a sort of a fail safe shut down thing in the event it all starts to overheat or some sort of failure kicks in. Apart from that, the, the control software that Gigabyte supplies, it has profiles and such like, and you can save things. And, uh, I don't want any of that. Um, and I suspect the people who might be in the market for this type of setup don't want that either. I, I understand why Gigabyte did it. They can't help themselves. It's what motherboard manufacturers do. They have utilities and they have their things and they have stuff and it's, it all gets a bit too complicated. Um, if they could cut back on that, that'd be a good thing. So the front panel, the display, I like. Uh, the the thinking behind it I could do without. I mentioned money there, and this is where we come to the big thing, which is the cost of waterfalls is two and a half thousand pounds, which sounds like a truly colossal amount of money, and of course it is a lot. The thing is that the graphics cards, the three of them, they are the equivalent of GTX 980 G1 Gaming, which are 510 pounds a piece. So that's 1500 pounds right there on the three graphics cards. Add in this aluminium one-off housing, uh, that's got to be two, 300 pounds, possibly even more. You've got three liquid cooling setups, that's certainly 60 pounds a piece. Um, add in the development and the software and the this and the that and the suitcase and the extras and so on and so forth. You're in the territory of two and a half thousand pounds. So although it sounds like a colossal amount of money, it's not uh, utterly unreasonable. If I could put it in a different context, the Core i7 Extreme we have running in the system, the uh, X99 gigabyte motherboard, the 1200 watt Seasonic power supply, the Inwin 707 case, the uh, Corsair DDR4 memory, and the uh, Corsair liquid cooler on the CPU. If you take those components together, you're in the territory of 1500 pounds. Add on two and a half thousand pounds of graphics cards, you're up to 4,000 pounds. That's obviously a lot of money, no two ways about it. Your display and such like is um, additional to that. If I could just point out that if you go to overclockers.co.uk, and we need to thank them once again for supplying the air-cooled cards that we use in this system, that uh, you can buy an eight pack system with four GTX 980s uh, that's been overclocked, runs the same Core i7 Extreme processor that we're using here, obviously DDR4 as well. Um, it's not the same system. They're hand built, they're overclocked, they look absolutely stunning. But that system with four GTX 980s, nine and a half thousand pounds. So obviously you get more for your money, no two ways about it, but five and a half thousand pounds extra, I'm not so sure. If this is parked under your desk, then uh, the, the difference between this £4,000 system and that £9,500 system are it's, it's degrees of difference. So is Water Force an absolute winner? Um, that depends. Let's face it, it doesn't look pretty. No two ways about it. Uh, uh, it is a very easy way of getting up and running with triple GTX 980s. What this has absolutely proved to me is that running multiple graphics cards, high-end graphics cards with 4K is, uh, yes, do it. Uh, if you are running high-end graphics cards, there's a lot to be said for liquid cooling. I would never in my wildest dreams have thought that water cooling GTX 980 would drop the temperature of the graphics cards by 30 degrees Celsius. The other thing is, if you refer to the test figures that we got, in particular, if you look at 3D Mark, 
it's interesting to see that the air cool system, the cards, the, the temperatures varied. Um, for example, in triple uh, SLI, uh, they were respectively 82, 60, and 76 Celsius. Um, in dual SLI, 80 and 67, one card 74. That's quite a spread of temperatures for three graphics cards that are packed like so. And what it suggests to me is that. Um, I, I imagine that within the GTX 980, it's actually throttling once it gets past 70 Celsius or so. That, that's the way these figures read to me. Um, I, th I suspect it's been done deliberately because it keeps the noise quiet. The fans don't have to spin up, um, but the temperature is lower than I would have expected. It's way short of any um, damage to your components. It's, I think, a way of just keeping the system uh, performing well and yet quiet is they want to keep the fan speeds down. The result is the GPU temperature would rise and they've set a figure at which they want to start throttling it. My guess is it's in the 70 degree territory, but that's purely my guess. Um, and the consequence is when you liquid cool the cards that much cooler, you get extra performance, which is, uh, you know, it's a handy bonus. But we see the results in uh, Tomb Raider where uh, the waterfall system performs far better than I expected compared to the stock air cooled system. So water cooling graphics cards, apart from the fact it preserves your components and keeps temperatures down, it does yield performance. And that, that's uh, nice to see. Um, uh, downsides. So, for example, water force, well, it's black. So if your case happens to be white or some other color, the question is, will it look OK? The fact you've got this hefty, great big chunk of aluminium sitting on top of your case, it needs to be flat topped. If it's curvy, that's a problem. In this instance, the, the perforated top of the case is where my Corsair liquid cooler for the CPU is venting. If you have a liquid cooler for your CPU, and I cannot believe for a moment you'll install water force in the system with an air cooler, uh, where is the radiator? Where does it vent? If you move it around so it doesn't vent, in this instance, the hot air from the CPU is going up and this is almost directly above. It's not a problem, the CPU has been fine, but it's a bit of a questionable sort of practice. Uh, so it needs to be a flat top case. When I'm working inside a PC, I often like to lay it on its side on the bench. When you've got water force on the top, you need to lift it away first in order to do that, because but the hoses are very short, so you kind of want to work with the thing stood up, and that's not convenient very often. So you have to change your practices. Um, and there are other things. I, I really, I wasn't impressed with the Gigabyte software. I can see why they've done what they've done. I'd much rather, as I said before, that they simply did away with it and just had on and off. Kind of think like Apple would think. Uh, do you want a control utility? No, we don't. We just want the thing to work invisibly and as though elves are doing it behind the scenes. So I am deeply impressed by the performance of uh, Waterfalls. It proves beyond a shadow of a doubt liquid cooling on graphics cards a good move and that having multiple GTX 980s in SLI for 4K gaming, yes, I, I'm totally sold on that. Um, on the other hand, of course, the money is, is a fright. But I understand that as well. Uh, I went into this review, frankly, expecting by this stage just to be laughing at it. Two and a half thousand pounds for a suitcase of graphics cards is silly. And I, I, it's one me other. I, I have actually deep respect for this system. Um, I very much doubt they're going to sell but a tiny handful of them. And I, I entirely understand that. But it is a revelation. 4K gaming, multiple GTX 980s, liquid cooling, quite quiet, very cool good performance, what's not to like apart from the price tag and unfortunately the cosmetics, but there we have it. If you're into plumbing your own liquid cooling, you're not interested. If you haven't got the time, the energy or the ability to build your own, this absolutely works and it works far better than I ever expected it to. So this is Leo Warder for Kit Guru and this is Gigabyte Water Force.